Today we're going to finish setting up September 2021 with a nod to our favorite Sassanac. Quite a lot of memories here. Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth and this is my fierce fictional female series and my personal bullet journal. This month, that woman is Claire from Outlander and many of you requested the rest of this monthly setup. So let's see where and when Claire takes us next. We already experienced her time jump to 1700 Scotland and Paris, so I thought we would start with Claire back in her own time. I struggled with what to highlight on week 37, but ultimately chose to showcase her at both the beginning and the end of this life chapter. Claire returns to the 1940s through the stones of Craignadoon about to be a mother. Here, she resumes her life with Frank Randall, and he promises to raise this child as his own. This period takes us through 1940s England to the United States and into the 1960s. I read this as a hazy and unfulfilling time for Claire, overshadowed by memories of Scotland past. She does find fulfillment in raising her daughter and again standing up to all the odds and becoming a solo female surgeon in a sea of men. I like the juxtaposition of pregnant barefoot housewife and successful doctor but I kept those drawings minimal and bland as a hint to her hazy existence. I'm no time traveler, but this Claire, I get. She resonates with me, and I know her intimately. Again, I am using a dark brown Pigma Micron fineliner for the drawings. It's a little less harsh than black, and I feel earthier and more appropriate to the time periods portrayed. Fans know Claire's heart forever remained in a Scotland of yesteryear. I love the wee hints of Tartan Outlander's costume designers weave into her wardrobe throughout this two-decade period. To symbolize how prevalent the Highlands are in her mind throughout this time, I am decorating the background of this page with the design of Claire's brown plaid coat, and this is where most of the color will be on the spread. Returning to Scotland after 20 years, the passionate and headstrong heroine is reignited and makes a choice to return to the past leaving behind her present. For the larger plaid, I use a light brown and a cross hatch over two dot grid spaces, repeating the pattern every four spaces, both vertically and horizontally. Then I switch to a darker brown and create the same pattern with a thinner cross hatch directly in between the lighter brown rows. Both of these markers are Crayolas from the Colors of the World collection. I'm freehanding this, but if meticulous lines are your thing, using a ruler and making the diagonal lines perfectly symmetrical does result in a cleaner look. I also kept a trusty mini calendar and the daily spots are simple squares to fit in as well as possible with the plaid. I do use a little bit of watercolor on Claire's outfits for both her pregnancy outlook as well as the doctor look, but again I'm doing this minimally to allow the pattern behind the boxes to be the star of the show. I thought about giving the entire background a light tawny brown wash, but this definitely resulted in a final effect of which I am pleased, even though Claire's looks are far less impactful. That coat is definitely a statement piece. Next up, I'm hopping back into the past with Claire and onto her transatlantic voyage for week 38. It's a big jump and skips important chapters, like Lollybrock, but we only have so many pages. To start, I'm drawing the outlines of both Great Britain and a hefty portion of the Caribbean islands and the lower part of the east coast of the United States. This is also the only inspiration I drew from the work of an artist and not a photograph from the film. I stumbled across this exquisite watercolor by Petit Atelier and absolutely had to use a version of it on this page. Even in this streaky, unfinished looking style, I find watercolor challenging, so my replica is nowhere near as polished. You should most definitely check out Petit Atelier's Etsy shop, I will link it in the description box below. One other reason for using Pigma Microns for the drawings in conjunction with paint of any type is that it is archival ink. This means it won't budge once set, even when water hits it. 
This helps me out in everyday use as well as I drink a lot of both water and coffee. Drips and spills happen outside of the creative process. Using a Pigma Micron, even as my daily writing pen, helps mitigate the damage. For the daily boxes, I created two ship's masts on which to hang some two-dimensional sails. This is the most basic of sail shapes, mildly wider at the bottom of each rectangle and increasing in size from top to bottom. Once all the pen is on the page, it's time for paint. This palette is the Yasutomo matte set from Michaels. It's very basic and affordable. I considered coloring in the ship's masts with the brown micron, but then I decided it needed to also be loose and purposely not perfect. So I used the paint and followed the sketch line without worrying about straying outside the lines too much. For Claire, the focus is really on her hat and the blue skirt with a pop of color at her belt. This ship look is the moment I begin really paying attention to Claire's belt fashion. Her use of belts for both functionality and fashion really sets her apart. It's a subtle reminder that she is a modern woman displaced by time. If you are just beginning to dabble in watercolor, then this loose, unfinished style is a good starting point. Paint isn't my favorite medium, but this way I can focus on touches of light and shadow without too much detail. Technique is optional. After many harrowing adventures at sea, because nothing goes to plan for this woman, Claire and Jamie arrive at the island nation of Jamaica. I'm going to keep week 39 fairly simple. To start, I'm using the oval portions of this stencil linked in the description box below to create the outline of the mystical blue sapphire featured heavily in the story arc. I will use that sapphire as my date headers. When it comes to Claire's storyline in the Caribbean, I definitively prefer the book to the television show. As someone who likes to tell a good tale, I can usually accept changes made for visual storytelling without too much frustration, but something about these episodes felt off to me. Here on the left is my mini calendar. For Claire's look in this top left corner, I'm floating her repurposed Paris yellow dress, now worn to the new Jamaican Governor's Ball above the calendar. I did flip the film still in my sketch to have Claire face inward, an old graphic design trick to not have people staring off the sides of paper into nothingness. On the right side, I'm recreating this look she wears walking through the Jamaican streets carrying an oriental umbrella, a nod to the character of Mr. Willoughby, and the blending of cultures, both good and bad, taking place on the island. This also gives us a closer look at the well-crafted period piece Claire made herself, with all its functionality and secret pockets, to wear back through the stones. Boy, does she get great usage out of this garment. Color on the page, I'm starting with the sapphires, making them darker blue around the edge and lighter in the center. Once fully dry, I will write in the dates over top of the paint. For the street look, I'm using shades of blue for the dress. I did rush through this part, not paying as much attention to shading. I also got too close to filling in the blue fully and lost sight of my loose abstract method so I may need to come back and touch up this later. I love the umbrella though. It's a simple element, but probably my favorite on the page. I painted it in a light yellow wash and merely hinted at its design with green and the pop of a reddish pink sun. Claire's ball gown is highlighted in shades of bright yellow and I'll touch off this look with a pop of pink tropical flower in her hair. It's a clear indicator in a room full of pomp and circumstance that this shindig is not taking place in England, but in one of its colonies. I think maybe it's the breakneck pace at which Jamaica comes and goes in the television series. It would have been nice to linger a little longer, only the length of one more episode, to slow things down and fully acknowledge this place as a pivotal moment in Gabaldon's overarching story of Claire and Jamie. For the last week of September, we skip more of Claire's ocean misadventures and find her finally in the place where she and Jamie choose to settle among the American colonies, Fraser's Ridge. The cinematography of them standing on a bluff overlooking the new world is one of my favorite moments, and I wanted to give it a page to itself, along with one of my favorite quotes. The right page will house my daily boxes, one box each for Monday through Friday and a sixth for the weekend. I'll touch off the headers with a light brown Tombow dual brush pen. On the left, I will squeeze in the mini calendar that is part of all my weekly setups. Then I'm drawing Claire, yes, only Claire, standing on that bluff. After all, this journal is about our fierce fictional females, no matter how much we may love the men who love them. 
The quote I'm adding to the page is from Drums of Autumn. It reads, This is our time. Until that time stops, it is our time. Will you waste it because you are afraid? I do keep the stylizing of the quote fairly simple, a small caps print combined with a larger one, and then my natural cursive. Question of the day for my fellow Outlander fans, what is your favorite Claire Fraser moment? While I am a fan of the entire book series, it is the first book Outlander that is still my favorite, and my favorite Claire moment is when she is deliberating Dougal's offer to marry Jamie in order to save herself from the English. It's written brilliantly on both page and screenplay. It's worth noting as I paint this scene that the colors of Outlander subdue dramatically from the splendors of Paris as they enter the Americas, returning to the more earthy tones that appear in nature or natural dyes with browns, greens, and blues, much like the costumes worn during the first segments of the show and Claire's arrival through the stones. In addition to Claire, I'm painting just a hint of the bluff using a mix of dark, mossy greens. With all the weeklies done, it's time to finish off this setup with my monthly review page. Normally, this is a combination playlist and review page. I do have a Celtic-themed Sassanac playlist. I will link it in the description box below. But this month, I wanted to try adding not just a playlist, but spots for other medias consumed in the monthly reviews. On the left are boxes for watching, listening, and learning. In the middle is a spot for me to list notable moments, and on the right are spaces to journal about both the good and the bad for the month. I'm bringing back a recreation of the Outlander font, Charlemagne Regular, for the header. I used this as the headers at the beginning of the month as well. The focus here is on Claire, standing in her surgery in the newly built manor house on Fraser's Ridge. This image sums up the Claire of the future, living in the present of her own ancestors. A woman of modern medicine surrounded by her personally curated apothecary and experiments. There are drying herbs, little jars and pots of potions and remedies, and of course, her microscope. To draw this credenza and all its nooks, I simply place a frame around Claire and then used a combination of square stencil and circle stencil for the alcoves. These shapes are on the same stencil where I used the oval to recreate the sapphires on the Jamaica spread for week 39. Once the frame was in place, I simply freehanded plants, jars, candles, clay pots, and all the other knickknacks to fill in her workspace. The paint colors follow that natural theme with browns and blues. If you are enjoying this journey into the world of Diana Gabaldon's Outlander, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more bullet journal, mindfulness, and project planning content. There are only three more months of this fierce fictional female theme, and I have some great ideas on what overarching theme may take me into 2022. You can find a curated list of other 12-month theme ideas on my Pinterest by clicking the link below or searching for Dots and Beyond. I took a little bit of an Instagram hiatus in August, but I am also posting over there again as well. Now let's flip back to the beginning and take Claire through her entire journey. From whenever and wherever you are watching this, remember that you too are fierce. Thank you for being a part of the Dots and Beyond family, and I will see you next week. Here are a couple more videos I think you might enjoy.